All right, so this is Ross. Uh, today's video, we're gonna update you guys on the cut and cover method here. This is the cut and cover method of winter protection of our fig trees. And if you wanna see how I did this, just the whole step-by-step, -step, it's a long video. We did this last year, and I think it's somewhere around 20, 25 minutes, just the whole process of me um, covering these trees. Now, in the last couple of weeks, we talked about cutting them back to six to 12 inches and how to do that. And there's actually a video, I have a very specific video on pruning them for this particular high dense method. So check that out if you're interested. I wanna talk about just the overall rundown and also a little bit more detail and other options that you guys might have in this particular video. So again, we covered them. It doesn't take very long. Um, and I'll give you the step-by-step -step real quick. So we actually put down, if you guys want to do this just real quick, is that you put down some vole poison. If you guys have voles or the potential for voles, it's a good precaution because they can get underneath this very easily and it kind of creates a decent habitat for them. You know, so if you're doing this out somewhere that has a lot of vole pressure, um, you have a big open field, maybe something you want to consider is actually, I have a link, I don't remember the exact product, but there's a particular chemical compound that you can buy. I have it on my Amazon storefront down in the description of this video. And you just scatter that stuff around these trees. Um, if the voles do actually come in contact with the trees, um, then they're gonna go after that poison first. They're gonna eat that and then they're gonna die. So this'll just kind of be a nice little, you know, detractor away from your trees and away from the wood because they love to eat the roots. They'll eat the, uh, the bark as well and they'll kill the tops basically. And this is just creating a nice little home, you know, because you, what we do after the, the vole poison is we put on top the, the straw. And the straw, again, is a nice insulative material, uh, but again, the voles might actually like living in that. They like big piles of mulch or big piles of material. They like to dig underneath and, you know, it just can create, it's just a nice little precaution there, guys, if you, you have something that, like that that could potentially uh, occur in your yard. So the straw goes on top next. That's the second layer. We try to cover as much of the tree as possible as we cut them back to six to 12 inches. Some of them are a bit taller than others. Uh, you really need to pile this on depending on where you guys live. I went pretty, uh, skim I skimped out pretty much on the, the straw this year. I tried to add as much as I could. I got about, uh, I used about a bale of straw, a large bale of straw per 120 square feet. So this is six foot wide by 20 foot long. And I used a, a large bale of straw. You could very easily, and I felt good about, I covered them for the most part. I felt good about that. You could use, if in this 120 square feet, you could very easily use two bales or even three bales, depending on how crazy you wanna get, depending on how cold it is where you guys live that you're doing this. For me, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Uh, really, it's, I'm in a weird spot here because for the most part, it's very close between they live or they die. And a lot of that has to do with obviously the fall, um, the temperatures that come in usually around Thanksgiving or Christmas. Maybe we have a hard freeze that actually zaps the trees and that does a lot of damage. Um, I have friends in this neighborhood, in this area, they have large trees that are not protected there's a guy 20 minutes from me who has uh, a million fig trees in the ground. Uh, there's also a friend of mine five miles away, which you could have a pre pretty big difference in climate, just five miles, but uh, all of his trees survive unprotected. So, you know, if he's having great success, and I know that I'm right on the edge of this, the only real protection that I need to give these trees is really just a tarp. You know, so the straw is kind of just like an extra layer uh, an extra bit of, um, I say, I would say confidence in this method. So for me in a zone seven, I really only need a tarp. Now, if you're going to let air get underneath the tarp, then potentially the tarp's not doing a whole lot in terms of if it's zero degrees out here and it's very windy, then maybe that could be where the straw comes in and, and kind of rescues this whole thing. 
but I would say even if you just wrap them with the tarp, they're mostly going to survive here. You know, you really just need very little protection. So that's kind of where I'm get what I'm getting at is that we do the the vol poison, then the straw, then the tarps. Now, if you get in a colder place, you guys are in zone sixes or zone fives or zone fours, you need to add more and more straw, or you need to have even a totally different material than straw. Let's say you guys just got some house insulation, you know, whatever that R, it's like R30, you can get rolls of it or whatever, that pink stuff, is it R30? All I know is that you use it in your roof and you cut it out and you can get it at Home Depot, you get rolls of it, and you can just roll that out on this, um, then roll it back up in the spring cover it with a tarp instead of a tarp maybe you guys have access to blankets or concrete blankets you know something where the water isn't going to necessarily penetrate maybe on the top layer but you could really get creative and and just if there's a will there's a way and people for whatever reason have seemingly not necessarily not wanted to do it but they're very skeptical and I would just argue, well, if you can wrap a tree, you can do this. This is easier than wrapping a tree. It's safer than wrapping a tree. It's more foolproof than wrapping a, wrapping a tree. Um, it takes less time. I mean, also, here's a nice benefit real quick is that I actually covered in this 20 foot long tarp, this 120 square feet, I have about roughly 30 trees. Uh, it's 10 going lengthwise and three going widthwise. So, there is, there is about 30 trees here, and we covered this in like no time at all. Um, it really doesn't take me so uh, very long at all. I went and actually did the entire yard, and you could do that probably roughly even in like two hours. Um, that's over 500 square feet. I think it's about, I covered 550 square feet of fig trees in the ground in this method, and covered them in about, you could probably do it in about two hours. So. Yeah, I think it's extremely quick. The only last point I want to make is you got to weigh this down. So we have bricks. All these bricks here are helping to weigh this thing down. I have bags of rock, bags of soil, like two cubic feet bags on top of areas that I think might be a little bit more sensitive to the wind. This whole area of the yard is the southern exposure. There is almost no chance that this is going to blow away or cause me issues because what you don't want to do is set this whole thing up and then a windy day where it's like 20 to 30 miles an hour out here this whole thing just blow away and everything you did was a waste so um you got to weigh this stuff down and i would just highly advise against getting something heavier duty more heavy duty than you think because simply just putting rocks on this may not be enough depending on the size depending on the weight if you have extra bags of soil, which you should, because if you're growing them in pots or you're trying to have a garden, it's good to get your soil before the fall ends, before the spring begins, because they don't always have soil early enough for the season. So you just have bags of stuff lying around or heavy objects. Go ahead and put it on top of this. You know, you don't want this to blow away. And I'll also say, that you guys for certain if you live in a very cold place you don't want a lot of wind getting underneath these these plantings here because that wind is only going to remove a lot of the effects of the insulation here so if there's air getting underneath it's nowhere near as insulative as it could be so again you got to get this you got to be creative you got to be at least put more time into this than other people might if you're going to be doing something like this. Um, now I do have a couple, one other method I want to show you guys real quick. Because as I said, we, we put our potted trees, see these are my jujubes, and I actually can leave them out here all winter time. I'm going to experiment with that, not even covering the soil, but, or covering the pots. I might just pile up some straw and just say, forget about the experiment, I'd rather be safe. Right here though, in this weird pile of straw is actually a tree. And what I'm gonna be doing perhaps with this tree here that we have in a one foot high raised bed and also this foot, we, this tree, this foot, we cut them back very low because I want them to re-sprout and be healthy. I want them to 
rejuvenation prune themselves. Then next year we'll wrap them in a more traditional sense. But these three trees are not protected just yet. And what I'm gonna have to do, I think, is come out here even to the front of the yard and I have myself those rings um, of chicken wire, which you put a stake in the ground to create a, a ring of chicken wire, just like this. And you can see the stake and imagine this whole ring goes around the tree. And then you fill that in because the chicken wire keeps all that material in. You fill that in, not with straw, but with leaves or wood chips. And that gets your fig trees through the winter time uh, without any issues. Now I could just throw straw over this, but at some point in the winter, it's gonna blow away. And the straw here is gonna actually stay wet and it's probably gonna rot the bark. So my next little trick for something like those three trees that we just looked at, I may not even do the probably won't even do um, what I just said. What I'm gonna end up doing is actually fill it up, is cover it with straw, and then put a pot over top of it. And get myself maybe a heavier pot or something like that. Maybe a, I don't know, a five gallon, or even a, or I should say larger than a five gallon, maybe a 10 or a 15 gallon size pot. And then put rocks or things on top of it so it doesn't blow away kind of like a trash can. Instead of a trash can, because people, that's what they do with, they, they wrap their trees, they throw a trash can over top. All I'm gonna do is put a pot on it and then uh, cover it that way. But everything in the yard is covered with this method here. And I even have some limbs sticking out. And I even did that last year, believe it or not, with a couple of these trees, is I actually didn't cover them with any straw or a portion of the tree didn't cover with the straw, only covered it with the tarp, and they made it through the winter time, no problem last year, although, it, and they took no damage, although it was a pretty mild winter. Now, you could have some damage, and I have had some damage in this method last year. So it's not 100% foolproof, but what happened was last year, I should say, I make this distinction, because it wasn't the method that caused the problem. It was actually the winter or the uh, the fall temperatures that came in here that I allowed these younger trees to be subjected to in this little plot. So they're very young and because they're very young they didn't have time to I guess dig themselves in and they're weak trees. I planted them in the fall. You plant them in the fall they don't have enough time to get their roots established sometimes especially if they're very weak and then they ended up dying. Um, so here's actually one here, just a very small area. Then I even have just blankets over this one. Straw and blankets. Now this one's going to be a test because the blankets will remain wet and the straw underneath will remain wet. And I guess the good thing about this is that it won't blow away as easily, but it's going to remain wet, potentially rot the bark. And then essentially, here's just this whole mess I mean, it's not really not pretty, I'll tell you that. So maybe the side of the house, who knows, someone might complain, but you can't tell me what I'm gonna do with my land, if you, if you ask me. I think that's honestly one of the most ridiculous things people can do, but um, yeah. So again, I think this method actually is, what I was getting at is that you're almost, it's almost guaranteed here that whatever's underneath these, underneath these tarps is gonna survive. Uh, it's just that those fall temperatures came in and wiped out a couple trees. Um, actually really only one, um, cause it was just so weak that it couldn't come back from the base and it ended up dying. And that's actually the only tree I've ever killed in the ground. So kind of uh, insane, worth noting. Um, I hope that you guys are willing to try this. This is not necessarily my method either. Uh, I didn't come up with this. People have been doing this for a long time. It's proven. It's not just proven by me, but other growers in other places. It's so simple. My friend Mario in Connecticut does this. He uses different materials. Uh, this is just something that I came up with, with these materials because they're easy to use. It's cheap, easy to find, I should say. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get this established. I think a lot of you guys have access to these materials. I mean, 
straw and, uh, and tarps. It's pretty common. So yeah, I thank you guys here for watching this one. Um, again, check out the other videos if you want to see how we did this from last year. And then also you can see that, you know, the fact that we cut these trees down and, and uh, the whole process. So we'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care, hit that subscribe button. See you for the next one.